China has too many electric vehicles. Oh, too many electric vehicle companies. Well, what the fuck does that mean? Like, how is that? China has too many electric vehicle companies, Minister says. China has too many electric vehicle EV makers, and the government will encourage consolidation, industry, and information. Blah, blah. The minister also said China would improve its charging network and develop EP, EV cells in rural markets. The government's promotion of greener vehicles to cut pollution has prompted electric car makers such as Neo, Xping, and BYD, I don't know if I said that right, to expand manufacturing capacity in China. China. China has too many EVs, the government will consolidate. The minister also said it was blah, blah, blah. The government's promotion of green energy. Zhao said the ministry was speeding up alternative solutions to address an auto chip supply shortage. China's market regulators last week uh, fined three auto chip sales companies for driving up prices in a move to help auto production in the world's biggest vehicle market. A prolonged global chip shortage has affected major automakers, including Ford, uh, Ford Motor, Honda Motor, and Volkswagen forcing many to idle or curtail production. This is very true. That's why everyone's licking their chops at Afghanistan right now. They're like, oh, those minerals. We need those minerals for our microchips and batteries. Wait, Rivian? They actually released it? EV startup Rivian is the first auto make, uh, maker to market with an electric pickup, beating Tesla, General Motors, and others. Rivian founder and CEO uh, RJ Scar Scaringe on Tuesday tweeted that the company's first uh, R1T pickup for a customer drove off the assembly line in the morning as it, as its plant at its plant in a uh, normal <laughs> normal Illinois. It's a very suspicious town. Always be deeply suspicious of normal Illinois. Something very abnormal is going on there without a doubt. Normal Illinois. EV startup Rivian is the first automaker to bring an electric pickup to the consumer market, beating Tesla, General Motors, and others in what's expected to be a hotly contested segment in the years ahead. Rivian founder and CEO RJ Scaringe on Tuesday tweeted that the company's first R1T pickup for a customer drove off the assembly line in the morning at its plant in Normal, Illinois. Or Illinois, if you want to be obnoxious, which I do. At any moment, I want to be obnoxious. Quote, after months of building pre-production vehicles, this, is mor this morning our first customer vehicle drove off our production line in normal. That was the exclamation point. Our team's collective efforts have made this moment possible, he said. Can't wait to get these into the hands of our customers. A Rivian spokes, I, every time I see Rivian, I think of Geralt of Rivia. Like, is this, is this a truck from uh, Rivia and Lyra? I wonder if their truck model is called the Meave. The Rivian Meave. A Rivian spokeswoman uh, confirmed that the vehicles being produced are sellable. She declined to discuss the company's plans for ramping up production, including how many trucks were produced Tuesday and who will be the first customers to receive the vehicles. The, production, uh, the beginning of production, which has been delayed several times, comes weeks after Amazon and Ford Motor back company filed the Amazon and Ford Motor Back Company filed a confidential draft registration form of an for an IPO. I thought I said resignation. I was like, ooh. Rivian is expected to be the first of a handful of automakers to produce an electric pickup by next year. GM is predicted GM is projected to be the next this fall with the GMC Hummer EV pickup Hummer. <laughs> Followed potentially next year by EV startup Lordstown, Lordstown Motor. What the fuck is Lordstown? Ford and then Tesla, which recently pushed back the visa. What the fuck is Lordstown Motor? Okay, I've got to look some stuff up here real quick. Lordstown Motor is an American electric vehicle automaker located in Lordstown, Ohio. The company is based out of the, out of the Lordstown assembly plant, which previously belonged to General Motors. Uh, wait, hold on. Oh, oh, okay, I skipped a whole sentence. General Motors has invested U.S. $75 million in Lordstown Motors. GM obtained a seat on Lordstown Motor Board of Directors and has included Lord of Motors in its Tier 1 supply chain. With the deal, Lordstown Motors is looking to compete with Tesla, Rivian, and uh, Nik Nikola. What the fuck is Nikola? 
Really, Nicola? Really, Nicola? When did this company... 2014. Nicola? Not Tesla. Nicola. Nicola is an American company presented... Uh, that presented a number of zero emission EV, uh, like a zero emission vehicle concepts from 2016 to 2020. The company stated on multiple occasions that it intended to take some of its view concept vehicles into production in the future, including expansive claims that uh, during the time the company prepared to go public. The company reorganized and went public on June 4th, 2020. As of July 2021, the reorganized company has stated that they intend to deliver the first 50 to 100 production Nikola Trey battery electric trucks in the fourth quarter of 2021, which is obviously not going to happen, but I think I remember seeing something about these guys. Like, there was a, there was a, um, there was a, um, a scandal of some sort where, where these guys kind of were outed as being frauds, I think. I'll have to look that up, too. I did watch this one, actually. Yeah, this is a good video to watch. This is a donut media video. I love those donut guys. They're really good. So we'll, we'll cue these two up. Anyways, yeah, that's funny. They named the company Nikola after Tesla. <laughs> Criminal fraud, yep. That's what I thought. Wait, so then I guess... I feel like these guys were probably under some kind of investigation for fraud too, but it sounds like they... uh. They actually pushed a video or pushed a vehicle off their production line. Let's start with this one. Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors. Lordstown Motors. I'm talking about Lordstown Motors. In 2020, Lordstown Motors was a company that offered a glimpse into America's all electric future. The company was assembled seemingly out of nowhere and quickly rose to fame. It caught the eyes of the US government and once traded on the stock market at a valuation as high as $5.3 billion. Yet, behind all this was allegedly one of the largest stock market frauds in US history. It was a fraud so large that it rivals other fraudulent promises such as Theranos, Nikola Motors, and Enron. Despite Lord Stone's deception that it will soon cover, the company still trades on the stock market today under the ticker symbol of RIDE. In this video, I will cover how an EV startup defrauded the entire United States and walked away with millions of dollars in cash. On November 22nd, 2016, a company named Workhorse Group revealed this plan to create a battery electric pickup truck called the Workhorse W15 pickup truck. The truck was seen as the ultimate disruptor of the pickup truck industry and showed the world the future of pickup trucks. For $50,000, people would be able to purchase a pickup truck capable of 80 miles of battery electric range and 230 miles of gas-powered range to a range extender. The CEO and co-founder of Workhorse Group, Steve Burns, had a sketchy leadership style from the start. Steve According Burns. to Hindenburg Research, one senior employee claimed they saw the more Blues questionable and unethical business practices from Steve than they had seen over their entire career. As the CEO of Workhorse, Steve burned millions of dollars into the Workhorse W15 pickup truck with no success at all. He made outrageous claims about production, which is seen in the following interview in 2018. Some of the fleets that pre-ordered uh, are going to get it latter part of this year. They're going to get some early units to make sure we haven't missed anything and it covers their needs. Uh, and so initial production will start late this year, but the, the bulk of them will be in 19. In February of 2019, Steve was pushed out of Workhorse for wasting money and missing deadlines. Four months later, Steve started his own company, Lordstown Motors, and purchased the intellectual property for the Workhorse W15 pickup truck. What we now know is that Steve didn't actually want Workhorse's intellectual property, which only included some designs and a couple of EV patents. The property that Steve actually wanted was the pre-orders for the Workhorse W15, which was a book of 6,000 pre-orders. Steve reclassified these orders as quote-unquote sales and used them to help raise money. In November of 2019, Lordstown got a deal to purchase an old General Motors plant with a $40 million loan. This purchase brought Lordstown fame on a local, state, and federal level. The unveiling of the Lordstown Endurance was attended by high-profile guests, including President Trump and Vice President Mike Pence. Of what course. the guests didn't know at that time of was course. that Lordstown would become a large-scale fraud. You can't have a fucking corporate scam without those fucking mooks somewhere lurking around in the shadows. Whoa. Oh, what, what's going on over there? Are are are, are we scamming people today? Oh, okay. Let's, I'm gonna I'm gonna go see what this scam's all about. These fucking fools. Of course. Why 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 was I not surprised that they would be in attendance? 
While on the stage, Lord Sound took a bold move to drive its prototype on the stage with Mike Pence. Six months later, this pickup truck would explode into pieces. They actually, wait, they stepped out of it? They were fucking, Six months they, later, didn't, fraud, they didn't just attend. High profile guests, they didn't just President attend. And Vice President Mike Pence. They weren't just what a the guest. guests. They didn't know at the time was that Lordstown would become a large They were fraud. a part of it. While they fucking stage, popped out Lordstown of the vehicle. Lordstown to drive its prototype on the stage with Mike Pence. Six months later, this pickup truck would explode into pieces. Oh, God. On August 3rd, 2020, Lordstown announced that it would go public on the stock market via SPAC under the ticker symbol of RIDE. In order to create investor confidence in the company, Lordstown allegedly created fake pre-orders and claimed those pre-orders as sales. Each pre-order does not require any deposit and in some cases, Lordstown actually paid other companies to pre-order. To give you a sense of what kind of companies are pre-ordering Lordstown trucks, take a look at one company that pre-ordered 14,000 trucks named E-Squared Energy Advisors. The company only has two employees on LinkedIn, <laughs> styled as an individual business, and has an office that is actually just a mid-tier apartment building. Yet, somehow, the company was able to pre-order 14,000 pickup trucks or $735 million worth of trucks. What? When Hindenburg Research reached out to the company, they were- What? Wait, hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. That seems- that seems beyond outlandish. They're pre-ordering Lordstown trucks. Take a look at one company that pre-ordered 14,000 trucks named E-Squared Energy Advisors. The company only has two employees on LinkedIn, was filed as an individual business, and has an office that is actually just a mid-tier apartment building. Yet, somehow, the company was able to pre-order 14,000 pickup trucks or $735 million worth of trucks when Hindenburg Dude, researched- Dude, that's a government fleet right there. Like, that's what, that's what, like, the state of Texas would, the state of Texas would order 14,000 14, trucks for its government employees. You know, that's not like a business. Not even like, maybe, maybe like a Walmart maybe maybe at amazon like you know they have all those delivery trucks Fourteen thousand delivery trucks even probably a stretch for for amazon but maybe not good lord that's that is a suspicious that's like i mean you're you, you're trying to get caught for fraud if you are purposely trying to get caught Reached doing a the fraud. Company, they responded by saying they don't operate a fleet and pre-ordered the trucks for a quote-unquote brand new program. Another company that pre-ordered 1,000 trucks was a two-person startup, and they had a virtual office listed as their address. Plenty of Lordstown's pre-orders are just like these examples. These vaporware pre-orders were clearly created to boost the valuation of Lordstown Motors. In one case, Steve Burns paid $30 for each pre-order that a company ordered. According to former employees at Lordstown, these companies pre-ordered the truck as a favor to the CEO, Steve Burns. Despite this, Steve Burns touted the pre-orders as if they were legit and going to go through. We, we have our whole year, our first year of production already pre-sold. We got 27,000 orders. We got customers really, really wanting the truck. Well, we sell to commercial fleets. That's our first customer. And like you said, we've already got 50,000 pre-orders. And it seems as if uh, some of these orders, the 50,000, are from solid, a Duke Energy, a First Energy. These people are not going to be walking away. They are committed. Right. Yeah. All of them. You know, when you order, I think our average order size is about 500 trucks at a time. Bringing in 500 electric vehicles into your fleet is not trivial. So you got to plan all the charging and everything. So it's very serious orders. And we have pre-sold very serious uh, orders. Thousand of these to to various fleets across America. Steve Burns essentially went on all sorts of platforms to tell everyone that their pre-orders were quote unquote serious, when most of them were actually just fake pre-orders. Most recently, Steve went on CNBC to claim that he has always Why been saying is he? That the oh my were God! This fucking goon! Are those truly this serious fucking orders? goon! Look at him, dude! He's dressed like a fucking like Bob the Builder. Why is he dressed like this on fucking Squawk Box? This is almost like a Daily Show bit. Well, no, we've been, Phil, we've always been very clear, right? These are, these are just what they're intended to be, right? These are non-binding letter intents. They're called pre-orders out in the, in the kind of real world. So always classified them for that. And, and we have a lot of those pre-orders. So it's very serious orders. We have pre-sold, already pre-sold. Do you regret the way you characterize those reservations? Well, reservation, I'm, Phil, all I can, you know, I don't want to get into the specifics. All I can tell you is demand is robust. 
We've never said we had orders. We don't have a product yet. By definition, we can't have orders, right? So when you're early and you're years away from a product, in this case, one year, uh, and now we're down to six months. So now that we have the betas, we are starting to be able to shore some of that up. But uh, I don't think anybody thought that we had actual orders, right? We just, that's just not the nature of this business. Steve is clearly contradicting himself here, but there are even more serious problems going on with Lordstown's truck and the company's claims about its future. In January 2021, the company decided to test out its pickup truck prototype. This would be the first road test for the Lordstown Endurance pickup truck. In just 10 minutes in the test, the truck suddenly started ah! lighting on fire. The entire inner what? portion of the vehicle was absolutely destroyed by the fire. Never. This would be the function in 3 to 4 years, if it even goes into production in the first place. First of all, to start with, the company's product is practically non-existent. In January 2021, the company decided to test out its pickup truck prototype. This would be the first road test for the Lordstown Endurance pickup truck. In just 10 minutes in the test, the truck suddenly started lighting on fire. The entire inner portion of the vehicle was absolutely destroyed by the fire. Nevertheless, two weeks after the fire, Lordstown announced that it would be building beta trucks, which was clearly a ridiculous statement. I actually called Lordstown out four months ago, before the company- Now, the electric truck fire thing, that's, that's- those batteries, like even Tesla has an issue. They don't, their cars don't burst into flames quite that often. But when they do, it's, it's a fucking ordeal getting those fires out. So it's not a surprise to me that a, that the truck fire completely obliterated that vehicle, but it is a little bit surprising that it caught on fire so quickly into its test. It should be alarming to everyone that this was only like a few months ago from a shady operation. He went public and told all of you to watch out for the company. In November of 2019, Lordstown claimed that the automaker would beat Tesla to the market as the first electric pickup truck. However, on that day, they had no prototype to show. That's right, no prototype at all. Lordstown made a single prototype and is acting like they can suddenly scale to mass production in less than one year. This all seems like a huge investor grab to me. I'm not a financial advisor and you should always do your own due diligence. But I do have to say that personally, this is a stock that I'm very cautious about. This could allegedly very well be Trevor Milton and Nikola Motors all over again. Back then, I received plenty of backlash, but now it's quite obvious that Lordstown could be a fraud. Yet, Lordstown's ethics goes beyond ambitious timelines. While Lordstown was looking for an infotainment system for its pickup truck, Steve Burns went into negotiations with a company named Karma Automotive to license out Karma's infotainment system. Instead of licensing Karma's infotainment system, Lordstown stole it. According to a lawsuit filed by Karma, Lordstown secretly hired employees of Karma and encouraged employees to steal thousands of Karma's proprietary documents via USB flash drive. After that, those employees used these documents to build Lordstown's infotainment system. The reason why these employees got caught is quite hilarious. After Lordstown cancelled its deal with Karma and stole all of Karma's proprietary documents, one employee accidentally sent an email to Karma showing how much money Lordstown would save by stealing Karma's infotainment system. In oh the email was a statement saying that Lordstown would save $4.6 million by stealing Karma's trade secrets and also confidential ah! information. Wait, those exact In words? addition to this, the Lordstown CEO has also deceived investors by lying about Lordstown's battery technology. In December of 2019, Steve announced that Lordstown was building its own battery pack inside the plant. Good. Uh, of course, if you're a, an electric vehicle, your battery is your number one thing. That's why we are building our own battery plant here. We don't make the cells, but we assemble these 6,000 small cells into a pack of our own design and it sits in the floor of the vehicle. So it's a critical part and you got to control the cost of it. A lot of people associate you know, there is the raw elements, the lithium, like you talked about, and the cells, but how you hold those 6,000 cells and, and thermally manage them and electrically manage them and get them to last a long time, that's kind of the secret sauce of an OEM, electric OEM anyway. And we we all do, we do that all in, in house here. There is absolutely claims, no chance that this dude. The stated that there is no battery pack <laughs> manufacturing equipment on site there now. No. They just put it together by hand. The contrast between Steve's claims and the former employees is quite drastic. It's either you're building batteries with machines in-house or you're not. We now know that Lordstown may have allegedly been involved in several criminal activities. Nevertheless, Lordstown's insiders are about to walk away with $28 million in stock and could walk away with much more in the future. That's right, before the company has even sold a product, its insiders have already sold millions of dollars worth of stock. 
that right there is a to clear who? sign that something is going wrong. And this who is very similar to a company that I called to? out multiple times in the past. In fact, during the time when Lord Sound's prototype went on fire, Lord Sound's executive sold $8.8 .8 million worth of stock. Overall, Lord Sound's eventual downfall should be a clear warning to be always suspicious of any company that claims to have revolutionary technology without even having a product in the first place. Let's uh, let's go back over that Lord's Town. Was it the Rivian? A tweet by Rivian's CEO. Yeah, we saw the tweet. The backing of U.S. companies like Ford. So Ford. I wonder then. It may have been that. When was this video? Um, earlier this year, huh? I mean, it could have been that it could have been that Lordstown faked it and frauded it enough to where they were able to convince a legitimate automaker to back them and supply them with the necessary materials and equipment to actually build a truck. You know, and if that's the case, then, you know, talk about faking it until you make it. I still don't know if I would trust that vehicle, but I mean, you know, if nothing else, it has a Ford warranty, whatever that's worth to you. Followed by the R1 SUV later this year, Rivian is plays with a splash TV market of its announced IPO valued at 80 billion. Like, I don't, who, who's valuing this shit? Like how? With launch edition versions of its two flagship EVs on the way this year, two more. Uh, plan later. So Rivian is gaining some serious momentum with today's news shared by the company's CEO. Rivian was nice to close videos first of all. Hmm. Man, I don't know. I don't know. Has anyone... Has anyone actually test-driven this thing yet? <laughs> Only Rivian thinks it's worth $80 billion. Yeah, no shit. Like, there are some videos that, like... This is about production delays. Uh, this was two weeks ago. What is Rivian versus Lordstown? Is Rivian not Lordstown? Or is Rivian... Is Rivian something else? Yeah, Rivian is Lordstown. So what is this Rivian versus Lordstown? I'm confused by that. Hi, I'm Jonathan. The battle between Lordstown Motors and Rivian. The battle between electric vehicles. Wait, hold on. Hold on a second. The battle between Lordstown Ro Motors and Rivian... Am I confusing something here? I am confusing something. Okay. The Rivian has nothing to do with Lordstown. Okay, okay. Well, okay, what was the name of the... What was the name of the Lordstown? What the fuck was that? What was the name of the... Or is it just not named? It's just an unnamed... I'm getting confused with all these car makers, all these EV makers. Rivian is an American electric auto vehicle automaker and... Automotive technology company founded in 2009. Rivian is a building an electric sports utility vehicle and pickup truck on a skateboard platform that could support vehicles or be adopted by other companies. The vehicles are designed uh, for both on-road and off-road driving electric vehicles. Blah, 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 blah. Rivian is based in Irvine, California with its manufacturing plant in Normal, Oklahoma, uh, Normal Illinois and other facilities, blah, 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 blah. Wait, so these guys are the guys that are backed by uh, by Ford and Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. In April 2019, Ford Motor Company invested $500 billion. Okay, so then what about Lordstown? I, I, geez, I got to keep this shit squared, squared up. Uh, GM. Okay, so Rivian is Ford. And Amazon and Lordstown is GM. Let's talk about this video is great. General Motors struck up a deal with EV startup Nikola to make and sell electric trucks. The news threw the automotive industry through a loop. There were lies, there were lawsuits, and there was even a sex scandal. How did such what? a shady company get anyone to trust them? Why are the feds coming after Nikola's founder? And why hasn't GM pulled out of the deal? We're gonna find out. So before we talk about why the GM Nikola deal might be a huge mistake, let's take a look at the founder of Nikola, possibly the biggest con man the car world has ever seen. That's saying a lot. <laughs> after you, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> also, I want to state after for the just... record that I, Nolan Sykes, do not hold any stock in either of these companies, neither does Donut Media, any opinions knowing what we know of Lordstown Motors, it's pretty big to say that this guy is a bigger <laughs> scam scam artist. 
The man behind Nikola Motor Company and the character at the center of this future HBO documentary series <laughs> is this guy, Trevor Milton. He's a college dropout from Utah and one of those guys with an overactive entrepreneurial spirit, which means he probably doesn't tip servers. Plus, he's got <laughs> a couple That's business exactly what failures he means. under his belt. In 2014, Milton joined the race to beat Tesla and founded his own EV company with a suspiciously similar name, Nikola. Uh, why would you, you can't name your company after the same guy. Like, it's like starting a car company named Henry. Henry. <laughs> anyway, Milton's mission for Nikola was to be a leading manufacturer of battery and hydrogen fueled, zero emission semi trucks. So he assembled a team with no relevant experience. For example, his brother Travis, whose <coughs> most recent work experience was pouring concrete on driveways, was named Director of Hydrogen Production and Infrastructure. Oh, that's not saying pouring concrete is a bad job. He's probably very good at it. I'm just saying, what the hell does he know about hydrogen production? But somehow, through charisma and luck, Trevor and his bro managed to drum up interest in their startup. In 2016, a mere two years after it was founded, Nikola unveiled the Nikola One, their hydrogen fueled class eight truck, which was projected to go into production in 2020. And I'll admit the prototype looked pretty awesome. And despite its lack of any proven technology, Milton claimed over and over that the truck was quote, not a pusher. This is not a pusher. It's not just a pusher. And that it was quote, fully functional. It was a fully functioning uh, you know, vehicle, which is really incredible. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. Despite the weirdly defensive statements, maker of Crispy Boys Anheuser Busch bought into the buzz and provisionally ordered 800 trucks. This was a huge moment for Nikola, as the order for this trucks placed by Anheuser generated massive interest, investment, and more pre-orders. And on June 24th of this year, Nikola's stocks went public, making Milton an overnight billionaire and legitimizing Nikola as a force in the electric truck game. And then, when you, when you hear people say that billionaires shouldn't exist and that billionaires haven't earned their money and billionaires don't do, you know, X times amount more work than normal working people, think about this guy. Think about this Trevor Milton or whatever. Like, this guy became a billionaire. When you think about the number of billionaires that exist in America now as opposed to the number that existed 10 years ago, and that number's only gone up, really. You know, despite the widening uh, wealth gap. These are the people who fill those shoes, who fill out that order. Like, when you talk about billionaires, you're talking about con artists and fucking criminal exploiters. And, and I say this while I'm, while I'm, while I'm pointing at the uh, donut dude. I, I don't mean him. It should be so clear and obvious to anybody that pays attention, even at a cursory level, to any of this shit, that no billionaires should not exist and the existence of a billionaire is that's like that's like a sign that there is a, a critical flaw in the system somewhere that's like the canary that dies dead it's almost like if you know you put a canary in the coal mine and it dies somebody says oh well that's actually good for like you know the the dead canary business you know like we 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 actually have a booming industry of 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 dead canaries so no that's not a warning sign that something's wrong it's actually a sign that things are on the up and up let's let's get those dead canary canary numbers up anybody that tells you that like you know this this crazy ass system we have that allows for the generation of of billionaires through psychotic means of fraud and just make believe uh, uh products and, and bullshit you know they're they're selling you a scam like it's all a scam like never mind just exploiting labor like like that's a whole different level you have your exploitation of, of labor right here and we can talk about that all day but then on top of that you just have plain old flat out legalized fraud why is this allowed to exist? The SEC investigates none of this shit anymore. Like, there are no criminal investigations into these fucking fraudsters. That's why crypto is fucking taken off through the roof. Something happened that no one anticipated. On September 8th of this year, GM announced that it'd be teaming up with Nikola to manufacture Nikola's new electric and hydrogen field pickup called the Badger. 
The Badger would have up to 906 horsepower and 980 foot-pounds of torque, a 600 mile range, plus insane options like water fountains and refrigerators. I actually do like how the thing looks. It's got like electric Raptor vibes. If it was real, it'd be cool. Up until this point, Nikola had been developing the Badger by themselves, but under the GM deal, they would still design and sell it under the Nikola name, but GM would lend the hydrogen fuel cell technology they developed with Honda, as well as their new Ultium battery. For providing the much needed tech and engineering, GM would get 11% of the company in return. That's equivalent to $2 billion in equity. That's a lot of moolah, but that's not all. They would also be the sole provider of fuel cells in all class seven and eight trucks outside of Europe for four years. Plus, they would nominate a director to Nikola's board. This deal was major, and when it was announced, Nikola's stock shot up by 33%. At the time, it seemed like a win for everyone involved, and they all lived happily ever after. For two days. On September 10th, something big happened. These guys called the Hindenburg Research Group released a report called, quote, Nikola, how to parlay an ocean of lies into a partnership with the largest OEM in America. This thing is the Hindenburg of reports, a 67 page scathing takedown of Holy Nikola shit. and Trevor Milton. It explains in great detail how his entire career was built upon dozens of lies that he somehow managed to jockey into a $20 billion company. But why believe these guys? Who's to say the report isn't just a bunch of malarkey? Well, for one thing, they had the receipts. There were documents, emails, texts, and a long list of whistleblowers ready to out Trevor for the Hold lottery. On a it, second. it is our company. But why believe these guys? Who's to say the report isn't just a bunch of malarkey? Well, for one thing, oh, a bunch they of malarkey, the Jack. There were documents. <laughs> Let's see. Real Zapko he discovered on December fifth that Rick Resnick has been indicted for tax fraud for submitting receipts. For prostitutes as a business expense? What? What? Wait, hold on. He's indicted for tax fraud for submitting receipts for prostitutes as a business expense. I don't even know what to say about that. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, shit. Emails. I, I, man, when you want that write off, you want that write off. The body. Wait, what? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. This is even. This might be even weirder, oddly. With the body, okay, I think they're talking about the builders of the body of the vehicle, not like bodybuilders. Not bodybuilders, but the builders of the body of the vehicle is what I'm assuming, but you can't tell anymore. With the bodybuilders on site next week, I perceive the focus uh, to be on cab wiring and the and the dry high in the voltage. Okay, okay, so they're talking about... Get exposed wiring looking as nice as it can. Confirm proper operation of uh, interior electronics desired for the show. <laughs> Text. You guys get that damn. <laughs> you guys get that damn truck running yet? <laughs> I want to see Redacted. We haven't touched the truck since the show. And then Smiley Face. And then I guess something Redacted with an exclamation point. You didn't hear that from me. And then a whole lot of Redacted. That's amazing though. Almost a year. Don't investors ever ask to see it run? I'm sure they... Wait, hold on. I need to read, read what that says. I'm sure they... Oh, come on. Get, get out of the... Let me turn that off for a second. I'm sure they do. I can't imagine how much work would take to, how much work it would take to get it to run, get that to run. Oh my god, oh my god, dude. Uh, <laughs> you guys get that damn truck running yet? 
and a long list of whistleblowers Lord trying Almighty. to get out Trevor for the liar he is. It is juicy, it is ruthless, and it was the catalyst for this giant controversy. Let's go over just a few of the most shocking lies that the report uncovered. Remember when Nikola unveiled the Nikola One, the electric semi that launched his company into the billions? Well, it never worked. Bloomberg initially reported that it was never even completed. It couldn't even power itself at the unveiling. There was a cable snaked up through the stage so its lights oh, turned on. God. They had artists stencil H2 and zero emission on the side of the truck, even though it had zero hydrogen components on board. Multiple whistleblowers that worked on the launch said that they had to run to the hardware store for loose parts during the show. That's some donut shit right there. <laughs> this stool's a little, need like a little. Leah, under pressure, Milton eventually admitted that it was never finished, but claimed that he never said it was, but he did many times. In another bold move of complete dishonesty, Milton released a video of the Nikola One, quote, in motion. It was pretty sick, I remember watching it. It was a zero emission semi truck speeding down a highway in the desert. But according to text messages from a former employee, this was also a lie. The semi was actually towed to the top of the hill and rolled down it like a Tonka oh, truck. Oh no. Uh, and Milton didn't just lie about the vehicles he wasn't making. In 2019, Trevor claimed that Nikola's headquarters were powered completely by 3.5 megawatt solar panels that he had installed on the roof. We have 3.5 megawatts of solar up on the roof producing about. However, aerial photos show no such panels. I mean, that's not even a good lie. Eddie with a drone could disprove it. If you say, okay, yeah, like we've got solar panels in the building, nobody's gonna be like, really? Really? I'm gonna go check it out. It's more like, okay, we know this guy's a liar. Let's just see if he's lying about this stuff. And then we find out that that's a lie. In the same year, Nikola promised a new battery that would revolutionize the industry, but it turned out to be vaporware, it was totally non-existent, and the president of the acquiring company had been found to use a NASA expense account to procure sex workers. <sighs> you gotta use your own money for that, dude. This and year, then he tried to write it off. just like Tesla, all of Nikola's components were made internally. But we do do all the e-axle design in-house, all the gears, the gear reductions, the thermal, the cooling, even the controls that go with it, and also the inverters as well. But it only takes a quick Google image search to reveal that his inverters are actually from a company called Cascadia, and that he covered their logo with some electrical tape in promotional videos. Premiere isn't even that hard to use. I can figure out how to do that. You don't need to use electrical tape. Look, that is a lot of lying, and that's not even everything. I, I gave you just little bits and pieces. Built on the lies of a poor man's Elon Musk. A sham, Oof. just like that one lady with the deep voice with the blood pills. This is what happens when you work to change things. This uh, is what happens when people think you're not doing something and you are. Of course, Trevor Milton and Nicola did deny the allegations of fraud, but with all of Hindenburg's receipts, well, the damage had been done. The Department of Justice launched a federal investigation into Milton's lies about having technology and the misleading investors. With the feds on his tails for fraud, Milton stuck his tail between his legs and resigned as Nikola's executive chairman. And still, for some reason, GM stuck by their deal with Nikola, even as the cards kept falling around this poor, poor company. Maybe with Milton gone, they could help salvage the Nikola name. After all, his replacement as executive chairman was Steven Gursky, a former GM vice chairman who just happened to be the architect of the deal with GM. A total coincidence, I'm sure. Maybe the whole Milton debacle would just stay in the rear view where it belonged and damage control could commence. But then, another bomb dropped on Nicola. Two women, one of whom was Milton's cousin, accused Trevor of sexual assault. Oh God. Well, if you thought this guy was bad now, this really sends old Milton into a deeper level of hell, okay? Milton, quote, strongly denies the allegations, but quite frankly, his track record doesn't bode well for his credibility. After the news broke, GM changed their tone regarding the deal with Nikola for the first time, quoting, in light of recent allegations regarding the personal behavior of Nikola's former executive chairman, Trevor Milton, we want to emphasize that GM strongly condemns sexual harassment and abuse of any kind. And it seemed like the deal might finally come to a bitter end. No one wants to be involved with a sexual assault scandal. But to everyone's surprise, GM didn't back out and negotiations are continuing. So why is GM doing this? Why would they want to be associated with the absolute dumpster fire that Nikola 
has become? The simple answer is that there's no downside for GM in this deal. It costs them nothing. There are several outs in the agreement and all they would have to do is employ technology that they were already developing and producing. If the partnership somehow succeeds after all this, GM gets a stake in the company, a sweet deal providing fuel cells, and maybe most importantly, practice running an EV company on someone else's dime. It's pretty genius. From a reputation perspective though, GM can stay relatively under the radar when it comes to their partnership with Nikola. The EVs they produce would be branded, sold, and repaired by Nikola. GM stays clean from complaining customers. And if you're not watching the finance and automotive headlines like I am, the average consumer would barely notice. If Nikola goes under, the worst damage that GM would sustain is a temporary black eye on its reputation. Plus, they get Nikola's facilities, which would support their need for EV real estate. There's no downside. They come out relatively unscathed if it goes <clears> bad, and if Nikola happens to deliver after GM gives them all the tech they need, then that's a huge move in the race against Tesla. It's just a win-win all around for GM. Podcast, not a lot of you know that. If you want to hear more in-depth, hour-long wow, stories- Wow, that's annoying. I just noticed that. Past, I just noticed that, it's annoying, you see? Three million views, but no date, because I have the window squashed. When I stretch it out, the date comes up. So I wanted to see what date it was, but I had no idea what it was, because my fucking window was squashed. Why couldn't they just re repurpose this, send it somewhere else, put it under, or something? Or fucking abbreviate it, you know? Use slashes, 11 slash 16 slash 2020, or slash 20. Just do that, don't fucking disappear it, you sons of bitches. Look, and like, if I if I squash it even further, it comes back. Why does it come back when it's squashed further and then I stretch it out to this and it disappears and I stretch it out and it comes back? Jesus Christ, that's fucking annoying. Let's see if there's any recent news from these goons. Oh, he, he's going to court. The criminal trial of Elizabeth Holmes, the former founder and CEO of Theranos, started yesterday in San Jose, California. When was this? September 1st. Okay. The trial of Trevor Milton, the former founder and CEO of Nikola Motors, awaits its time in court, likely in the coming weeks or months. So there, he's about to go to court for his various crimes, I'm sure. Nikola partners with Bosch on fuel cell on fuel cell supply. Hyundai is coming for Nikola's hydrogen business. The market is happy. Hold on a second. Let me do a quick glance on this. Nikola, the electric startup company struggling over, uh, to overcome charges of fraud against its founder, has formed a strategic partnership with industrial powerhouse Bosch for fuel cells for its hydrogen. Huh. I guess there's still you know, full steam ahead, every article that comes out about them for whatever move they make is going to be buttressed with tales of its shitty founder being tried. That's unfortunate for them, I guess, or at least for the decent people who are still there. Hyundai is coming for Nikola's hydrogen business. The market is happy. Hydrogen-related stocks for next Tuesday, blah, 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 still investors are... Blah, blah. Hyundai, Hyundai Motors announced Tuesday it would make hydrogen fuel cell vehicles of all of its commercial vehicles by 2028. What's more, it plans to introduce a new fuel cell, uh, cell system by 20, in 2023 and cut cost of fuel uh, cell vehicles to the equivalent of battery electrics by 2030. Oh, man, you know, these dates are so far out still. I mean, honestly, there's is shit that should have been done like 20, 30 years ago, but, you know fossil fuels and the technology really wasn't there in a lot of respects but you know a lot of this technology was or wasn't really that far off and all it takes is the investment what why nicola lordstown and hi what's heisen heisen's another one Lordstown shares dropped below $5 per share yesterday for the first time. The company has been under fire for misrepresenting the details surrounding the progress in launching its endurance pickup truck and has admitted it needed additional funding to continue to operate. It held its shareholder. Oh, wait, I thought. What is Heisen? There's a lot of this shit that I just don't know. Dude, like, the electric motor, 
EV, you know, I got to start paying attention to EV. This is what the new, whenever I talked about, um, when we were watching those car videos and I was saying that the one thing that tethers me to, you know, capitalism still is my love for like the golden age of automotive, uh, of the automotive industry, like 19, basically the 1940s through the 1970s. Uh, and like all the cool competition and whatnot that was happening as a result then and how we need some of that now and et cetera, et cetera. I think it's happening now. It's just happening with these new EV makers, like the old guards just kind of trudging along with their ran with their, you know, usual bullshit. But like now, cause it's not, it's like Tesla, Nikola, Lordstown, Rivian, Heisen, Polaris. Polaris is one of them. I know of them. There's a lot of these new guys out now, and they're all competing in the same space. I don't know if any of these guys are going to be able to outmuscle the traditional vehicle brands. These guys are all, it looks like these guys are focusing on heavy industry, though. I don't think they're, uh, I mean, that's great, too. I don't think they have an interest in uh, consumer vehicles. Rochester, New York, huh? Heisen Motors is a supplier of zero emissions hydrogen fuel cell power commercial vehicles, including heavy duty trucks, buses, and coaches. Heisen was established as a new business under uh, business of Horizon Fuel Cell Technologies. Okay. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Oh no. Plans to make an uh, NEOM. Plans to make, uh, what's NEOM? Is a planned cross-border city in the Tabuk province of northwest Saudi Arabia. It is planned to incorporate smart city technologies and function as a tourist destination. Fucking hard-ass pass on that. To make NEOM a city with substantial uh, with sustainable energy and zero carbon emission. NEOM, Heizen, and uh, modern, uh, Jesus Christ. I'm tired. I'm about to leave. <laughs> Neom, Heizen, and Motor Groups have signed a memorandum of understanding to establish a company called Heizen Motors Middle East for the develop for the develop and assembly facility in Neom with an annual capacity of 10,000 vehicles targeting the markets of Saudi Arabia and the Gulf uh, Cooperation Council in the Middle East. Oh, wow. Fucking careful. Tread lightly, Western New Yorkers, in dealing with the fucking Saudi Arabian, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Poof. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll pass on uh, Neom being a tourist destination for me.